simple ingredients, simple meals. Welcome to Frugally Delicious. Today, I am going to show you three meals that are very simple, very basic, and they use very basic items from your pantry or your fridge or your freezer. I make single serving budget meal ideas and I love sharing them with you. So I hope you enjoy these ideas. So without further ado, I'm going to just jump right into my first meal idea. For this first meal, you'll need just a few items, some lentils. You can use any color you want to. I'm going to be using some brown or green, whatever you want to call them. Some corn tortillas, cheese and tomato. That is it. So we're going to get those lentils going and we're going to season these like you would season some taco meat. But first we need to get these bad boys a cooking. I'm just going to cook just enough for this meal. You can make as much as you want. That was a cup of water and I'm going to use one fourth cup lentils. This is going to be plenty. They do plump up a little bit, so should be enough for two. Oh yeah, we're making some lentil tostadas. We're going to flavor these and season these like we would season our regular taco meat. So I'm going to cook these until they're just about al dente, slightly on the crunchy side, because I am going to continue to cook them after they're cooked, <laughs> if that makes sense. And because it's going to take a minute, I want to get my tostadas cooked, prepared, and set aside to cool. So you can do this in the oven if you want to, but I am going to crisp these up in the pan. And these are bigger than the normal ones I get. So yay me, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to toast these in my pan. All you gotta do is just put it in your pan and then just keep flipping it back and forth. It'll probably take about 10 minutes. If you wanna pop a whole bunch in the oven and do this in 10 minutes, you can. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do it right here on top of the stove. It's my thing. It's what I like to do. My tostada is nice and crisp. Just gonna set that off to the side and let it cool. Well, most of the liquid has already gone out of my lentils. I'm gonna add in my taco seasoning. You can use any flavorings you want to. Uh, cumin, chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder, anything you normally would use to make your homemade taco seasoning. I just have this already made, so I'm gonna use some of this taco seasoning packet. What about it? teaspoon to a tablespoon in there, depends on how much flavor you want in there. And then there's not a lot of sodium in there, so I am gonna add a splash of salt to mine. Just mix that up. I'm gonna continue to let this boil until all of the water is gone, and then I'll give it a taste, see if I need to add any more taco seasoning to it, any more salt, a splash of pepper. You could add hot sauce in here, you could add salsa in here. You could add onions in here, <laughs> you get it. But I'm making this a very basic lentil tostada. Be back in a flash. I would note that I'd probably err on the side of putting too much seasoning in here than not enough because this really is the only thing that's gonna have seasonings and flavor in it for this meal. So if you err on that side with all of the other ingredients that are gonna be on there, you're gonna get a better flavor. I am gonna use a half a tomato for my toppings on my tostada. So put that half away, and then I'm going to chop this into little bite-sized pieces. And why little bite-sized pieces, you ask? Because there's nothing worse than biting into a tostada and it just falling apart. All your toppings just tumble and I'm not gonna be having that on these tostadas. Nope. Can I just tell you that this smells freaking fabulous. It smells so good and I tasted it. It has a wonderful meaty flavor to it. Those wonderful seasons and spices you get from a nice taco seasoned beef. Oh yes. So all we gotta do is build these bad boys. 
going to put a helping heaping of my wonderful taco seasoned lentils on top. And you'll see plenty of lentils on these delicious tostadas. Going to toss a little cheese right there on top. Hopefully it'll melt just slightly from the heat of the lentils. If you do want a nice melty cheese, you can pop these in the microwave or put them back in the pan or in the oven for about two to three minutes. Nacho cheese or what I like to call liquid cheese would be really good on here also. I'm gonna top mine with just a little dollop of sour cream. Top it with your wonderful colored pop and delicious acidic flavor of the tomatoes, slightly sweet. They just make the tostada so pretty. You can use canned tomatoes on here if you don't have fresh tomatoes. If you like a little bit of heat, you could put some Tabasco on top or hot sauce. I'm just using a local restaurant's sauce pack of some hot sauce. Nothing fancy, using what I got. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm really excited about giving this a try. <laughs> it smells so good. I know I've said that, but it really does. There you go, one tostada. Let's give it a taste. I had to take a couple of bites. That is really tasty. I don't miss the beef or the turkey or whatever ground meat. I don't miss it at all. This, it, this is gonna be a dish. You have to try these lentils seasoned with taco seasoning in order to understand it's not, it doesn't taste like beef, but with that taco seasoning, you don't know that there's lentils in there. I don't have words, it, it's so good. Obviously you can put anything on top of this tostada that you would put on a tostada. I do think lettuce, that cool, crisp, refreshing lettuce would be really good on here. Just a nice contrast in flavors. I think a little bit of Spanish rice mixed in with the lentils would be really tasty. I'm making a tortilla taco pizza. Have the other half of my tomato from earlier, so just gonna get that chopped. All right, and this meal does come together really fast, which is good because I'm super tired. I've got two tortillas, two flour tortillas that I actually made. I'll leave a link below how you can make these at home yourself from scratch, four ingredients plus water, super easy. I'm doing like a, a double decker pizza. I do want the bottom shell to be pretty crunchy. This one can be on the softer side, so hopefully it'll give like a chewy, crunchy texture. I've got a half a cup of refried beans. I'm gonna spread that on my tortilla. I should probably do this outside of the pan, but I'm a little impatient today. You're gonna have to forgive me. If you wanna just make a single layer, you can do that. Just toast up the bottom of your tortilla and then put all of your toppings on there. But since I'm kind of going for like a, a double decker here, a double decker pizza, I do want to have two tortillas and kind of stack up my ingredients. You can use whatever cheese that you want to. I'm using some sharp cheddar. If you have some mozzarella, I think that would work best, but it's really whatever you got. I don't need a lot in between the layers. I just want a little bit to kind of help uh, provide the glue to get this stuff stuck together. Get it nice and flat, so you have a nice flat surface to work with. Gonna add on another layer of my refried beans. I'm gonna now officially top it with a good layer of cheese. That all spread out. I'm gonna cover mine so I can get that cheese melted and then let the bottom of that crisp up. For me, I like it when the cheese just barely starts to melt. It's just my favorite. I'm gonna top it with some tomatoes. If you don't have tomatoes, you can just use salsa. If you don't have salsa, you can just use tomatoes. If you have both, you can use both. I got plenty of tomato left over here. Just get a little dollop of sour cream right there on top. I just love sour cream. Just give it a little touch of salsa on the top. And because salsa looks good on top of sour cream, just one little boop right there. She's plated, cooled, and she already had her picture taken, so she's ready to go. Let's give it a try. It definitely has a 
smidgen of a crunch to the bottom. It's more chewy than anything. I think what would be good is some salsa in between the layers. I think it needs just a little bit more pop of flavor in there. That, and I need to get some of the sour cream towards the edge. I should have spread it around, but I wanted it to look nice, so. It's really good. Usually I put an egg on it and I'll eat it just like this. Super tasty. For this third and final meal, I am gonna be making some broccoli and noodle soup. You'll need broccoli, pasta. I'm using spaghetti. I am gonna break these down into tiny little strips. And then you will need some form of cream of soup. You can actually do this three different ways. If you do not want a creamy soup, you can just use a bouillon, either beef or chicken, whatever flavor you want. This is kind of more like uh, copying a chicken noodle without the chicken. And then add water to that and make your own broth. Or you can just use a jug or a jar of chicken broth, beef, or vegetable broth. I'm gonna go for a creamy soup base. So I have made some homemade powder version of cream of whatever soup. So I, I actually made this in the past, I'm not gonna go over it again. I will leave a link below for a video I did where I talk about all the things I put in here. It's really basic, it's just some spices and some powdered milk. I'm gonna get my water boiling. I have a little over one and a half cups of water. I might need to add more water as this progresses. First and foremost, I do need to get this to a boil so I can get my cream of soup mix dissolved in the water. I'm gonna cook everything right here in this pot. All right, we got impatient Miss Frugally Delicious today. So that is almost to a boil. I am gonna add in my cream of soup powder, just eyeballing it. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons, give that a mix. Of course, I can add more as it cooks if I feel like it's not milky or creamy enough. I really like the homemade cream of anything soup I made. I add it to all kinds of things. It's super convenient. I don't have to worry about opening a can and you know trying to use it or making sure I freeze it. So this is really convenient for single serving meal makers. And I can already tell I'm gonna need one more tablespoon at least. So I'm gonna add that in now. I'm gonna toss in my baby trees, AKA broccoli. I did chop it up. I did it while it was frozen, worked perfectly. Again, if you don't want a creamy base soup, you can just use some form of broth. It will work also. I just kind of am envisioning a creamy soup and I like that base. So I haven't done that in a while and thought I would give it a go again. With my spaghetti sprigs, <laughs> just gonna break them into, I don't know, about an inch sized pieces. I'm gonna toss it in there. It's gonna absorb that nice, creamy, delicious broth and cook with the broccoli, cook with the soup, and within about 30 minutes, or however long you wanna let it sit, it'll be tender and delicious and ready to be eaten. And it is as easy as that. It took about 20 minutes or so to get those noodles soft. Just going to put it in a bowl, let it cool, and then give it a taste. There's my pretty soup. Let it sit here for like 10 minutes or so. It was super hot. I am not gonna burn my mouth today, mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, let's give it a go. I highly recommend trying to make your own cream of soup powder. It's really good. It's a great replacement for the stuff in the can. I like that this is a meatless meal. You still get protein. You might be surprised, but broccoli actually has two grams of protein per serving, and the serving is one cup. Plus, there is powdered milk in the powdered cream of anything soup. So you get, you get lots of protein in there and you get the carbs from your noodles. Just a very simple dish, comes together in like 20 to 30 minutes. I hope you enjoyed these three simple meal ideas. You could do lots of spins on a lot of these ideas, adding different things. You could even add meat to them if you have meat. These are all just very basic meal ideas. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next week and happy eating, my friends.